Hi, YouTubers and Wetshavers everywhere. It's MarkRickGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? Hang on, I got something. I got an old friend this morning. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, this comes courtesy of Prime Day, as a matter of fact. Well, that's a good cup of coffee. I have a Maxwell House in the K-Cups. Yeah, great cup of coffee. And this is their house blend right there. Yeah, and the reason why I am using the K-Cups is because I have a new Keurig machine. My old Keurig machine, it just died and I tried to get it running again and it just, it's not working anymore. It was a gift I got from my nephews, Mike and Jim, probably, gosh, what, seven, eight years ago, something like that? Well, it just kind of gave up the ghost and uh, it's no longer working. So. Uh, on Prime Day, I happen to see a really nice deal on a Keurig machine. Hang on. That's a good cup of coffee. Hang on. I'll, hey, I'll show it to you real quick. It's the best way to show it to you. I'll show it to you this way. Hang on. Okay. So here it is right here. This is the Keurig K-Mini Coffee Maker. Uh, of course, it's a single brewing machine. You just pop this open here. You put in your, your K-cup right there. Uh, and the way it works is you fill this reservoir right here with anywhere from 6 to 12 ounces of water. Now, it doesn't have a water warming container in here. It just has this reservoir. So the water goes in, the water goes out, and that's it. And uh, this was on sale on Prime Day. It was regularly $70, and it was marked down about $27, $28, something like that. Now, my deal for this, which is why I bought it, uh, ordinarily $69.99, then it was $27.26 off. I got a Whole Foods credit that I talked about last time that took off $6.39 with the Whole Foods credit. Uh, then they gave me another $10.44 in rewards points, add in a little tax, and it was $16.59. So how could I say no to that? So all you do is you fill up your mug, you open this up, dump the water in, close it, pop this open, put in your K-cup, turns on automatically, put your mug there, hit the button. Two minutes later, you've got a cup of coffee. Hang on, let me put this away. Anyhow, uh, I tweeted that deal out when I saw it, and then I thought, you know what? I need a Keurig coffee maker. Um, I've got all these K-cups that are just sitting there because my machine, my old machine wasn't working anymore. So I went ahead and got that. Two minutes to brew a cup of coffee. Now, a lot of people out there, a lot of reviewers are saying that's not fast enough for them. Uh, you know what? Less than $20 for me, two minutes is fine. That's the way I look at it. If it was $70 and brewed in uh, two minutes, then I might have a complaint. But you know what? Two minutes is fine. So um, I'll link this again, but I don't know what the price is going to be. Let me see what the price is right now if you're interested. Because it's nice, it's slim, it's compact. It's portable, and uh, it really makes a nice cup of coffee. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, it's marked at $73.99 right now. Um, keep an eye on it. Maybe uh, around Black Friday, the price will come down again. If I happen to see that, I'll, I'll tweet that out. Now, I hope you were following me on Twitter uh, on Prime Day when a lot of these sales were going on because there were some really nice wet shaving deals. There were some generic kind of deals out there some generic razors and some other brand of soaps that are I, I guess you could say less popular not as widely known and sometimes those are very very good however towards the end of prime day on wednesday with about five or six hours left all of a sudden it lit up and i started tweeting some deals on uh the edwin jagger kelvin razor yeah this went on sale for $21.27. I hope you saw that if you wanted a Kelvin razor. Ordinarily about $27, $28, marked down to about $21. Bucks. Really, really nice price. Not only was this one on sale, but also the Ebony. The Ebony came down to about $21 as well. Now, I originally bought this when they first released it, or around the time when it was first released, I think, it was $22. I've seen this go as high as about maybe $35. 
Uh, I think it's right in, settled in right in about $28 or so. On sale for about $21, $27. That was great. They also had a long-handled Edwin Jagger razor that was also $21.27. That was a good deal. I hope you, I hope you uh, followed me on Twitter and got some of those deals. Also, there happened to be uh, some sales on Parasso. Parasso aftershave balms and splashes, pre-shave creams, Parasso White and Parasso Red. Those two lines were on sale 40% off at checkout. So, you know, that 40% is nothing to sneeze at. And of course, this Parasso White, it's got a great scent, great for sensitive skin. Uh, I like it a lot. So if you were low on Parasso, that was a really nice time to stock up. And that happened, well, I happened to see it with about five or six hours left uh, on Prime Day on Wednesday. If it had uh, happened earlier and I wasn't online, I might have missed it if it had launched earlier. But when I did see it, I started tweeting it out. So I hope you were able to see those tweets. I hope you were able to get some of these deals because that was nice to, get, to see Edwin Jagger and Parasso come up for Prime Day. That was really, really nice. I, uh, I was really happy about that and I started tweeting, you know, doing a little, little tweet storm there on those. So that was really great to see. All right, so that's all I wanted to mention about that. So, hey, hope you got a cup of coffee. Hope you're joining me this morning. Uh, boy, we got an autumn chill in the air going here. I had to wait a little while to start shooting this because it was darker uh, this morning, but it's starting to brighten up a little bit. So uh, let's get some of these questions and uh, let's have a little fun talking about shaving. Okay, this first question comes from Anthony Lauder. And he was responding to my video review I did on Williams Mug Shaving Soap. And he writes, I used Williams for years, but I've heard it called a cake and or a puck. Which is the correct term? Well, I've always called soap in this size here a puck. Looks like a hockey puck. A puck of soap. Now, a cake of soap, from what I understand, is the old-fashioned way of saying a bar of soap. Like this. This is Dr. Bronner's all-in-one. A bar of soap. And um, I think that might come from the fact that soap, according to what my research is telling me, soap was made in large blocks and then cut into slices. I'm thinking that uh, when we talk about cutting a cake like that, it's probably a sheet cake. Not a tiered cake, but a sheet cake, and you're cutting it into re rectangular slices like that. Maybe that's why this is called a cake of soap, because it's sliced in a rectangular shape, similar to what those kinds of cakes were cut into. Made from large blocks and then sliced in the rectangular shapes, which is why it's called a cake of soap. That's my understanding, uh, and that's what I've learned from just you know, doing a little research. Uh, it could also be a regional difference from what I, what, I, what I gather. Maybe it's similar to soda and pop. I have friends who live uh, in Long Island, in the New England area, and uh, they refer to soft drinks as soda. Over here in the Midwest, we call it pop. So maybe it's a regional difference. Maybe some people call this a cake of soap, and other people call it a puck of soap. That's, uh, that's kind of a long and short of it, but uh, I'm thinking that uh, this shape of soap right here I think more people call it a puck of soap. Uh, whether you call it a puck of soap or a cake of soap, entirely up to you as long as it gives you a great shave. So thanks very much for that, Anthony. I really do appreciate that. I hope that ans answered your question. If anybody else knows any more uh, regarding the history of a cake of soap or a puck of soap, please comment below and let us know. Okay, so this next question comes from Jamie Jack and he writes, so do you have to clean and dry the razor blade after every time you use it? Well, I do. That's, that's, that's my routine. I will clean my razor and the blade after every single use. And here's how I do it. I uh, will disassemble the razor if it's a three-piece razor. I'll dry off the handle. I will thoroughly dry the base plate and the cap. And I will then take the razor blade and I will pat it or blot it dry. And if it's a razor blade that has another couple of uses in it, 
then I'll reassemble everything. I'll put the blade back into the cap of the base plate. Uh, you know, I'll put the blade back in and then I'll put the base plate back in place and I will reassemble it. It's all nice and dry now and I'll just set it on my razor stand uh, awaiting my uh, next shave uh, the next day. If it's something along the lines of a um, three-piece razor like my Fatigue Grande where the handle is hollowed out uh, like this. You can see it's got a little bit of a hollow in there. Uh, again, I'll dry the base plate and the cap. I'll blot dry the razor blade and then I'll get a uh, like a cotton swab like this and if need be I'll just, uh, you know, take a little excess moisture out of there or even, you know, blow it out, that sort of thing, depending on uh, <laughs> what I have handy at the time. Uh, other razors that uh, have a few more parts to them, say my uh, Merker Progress here, this is an adjustable razor. This has an inner barrel in there that holds the cap in place, a two-piece razor. So what I'll do is I'll disassemble this whole thing here like this. Again, the cap and this threaded stud, I'll dry that off thoroughly. The base plate is attached to the handle, but this inner workings right here. I will take this out. I'll dry this off thoroughly. Again, I'll get a cotton swab. I'll run a cotton swab through there all the way through. Just get that extra moisture out. I might even take the cotton swab and maybe even, you know, go through these channels here and get some of those areas dry. Blow on them, just dry it all off, and uh, then I will reassemble everything and put it back together. So it's ready for the next day shave. And if I had a blade, the blade will now be blotted dry, and I'll reinstall that and put that in there. For my twist to open razors, like my Vikings Blade Chieftain, I'll open that up. I'll take the blade out. Again, pat it dry, blot it dry. I don't rub it because rubbing will take the edge off from what I understand, but I just blot it dry in, in my shaving towel after my shave. And then I will then take that shaving towel and I will just very, very gently dry off all these doors, dry off the handle. Now for my twist to open razors, I'll put the blade back in and I'll leave the doors open to allow it to dry a little more, a little more. I mean, it's dry, but just by force of habit, I just leave the doors open. Then I put that on the stand and I let that sit there for a little bit. And uh, depending on the time of day or where I'm going, that sort of thing, then I'll close it up, put it on the stand, and I'll be ready for the next day. So that's my routine in cleaning my razors. Yes, I dry that blade off after every single shave. The other reason why I also dry the blade off is because sometimes when I remove that blade, there is some cream that is built up on the edges of that blade. So I'll rinse that off real quickly. And then again, I'll pat it dry. I'll blot it dry and then just um, go about the process as, as, I, as I described. So that's my process, that's how I do it. If you have a different routine out there, let us know below, comment below and let us know, but that's kind of the way I do it. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Jamie Jack. Really appreciate that. Okay, uh, this next question comes from Tobin Fetters and he commented, uh, in a video I did back in 2018, November of 2018, called Synthetic Brush Talk, where I showed some of the different synthetic brushes that I use. And he wrote, no love for PAA, that's Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, Phoenix Shaving. Uh, you shared some great brushes. I have too many to count, but to do a list like that and not one PAA, another good video, Mark. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Tobin. I really do appreciate it. I did this video before I even discovered phoenixshaving.com. I guess that was right at the time when a lot of viewers out there were telling me about artisan soap makers and all that they offered. And it became like this light bulb over my head, like, oh my gosh, look at this. Look at all these great resources out there for wet shaving gear. Soaps, pre-shave soaps, brushes, razors, all that kind of stuff. And Phoenix Shaving has a lot of great shaving brushes, great shaving gear. Great shaving soaps. Um, the first brush that I purchased was the uh, Atomic Rocket. This was great. Actually, I purchased the Atomic Rocket along with the uh, Peregrino. Boy, these were terrific, terrific brushes. I especially like the Atomic Rocket for head shaves 
because it's a 26 millimeter knot. I like the shape of the handle because I can grab it right on the end and get it up there and swirl it around. Makes a great lather. Their shaving brushes from Phoenix Shaving are probably some of the best synthetic brushes at great, great price points. Really remarkable. And the other thing I like about it is Douglas Smythe does a lot of nice research regarding the handles of these razors. He'll look at vintage shaving brushes from uh, days gone by and that inspires him to design some of these newer shaving brushes with synthetic knots. So it has that great kind of vintage vibe to it, bringing it back to the traditional wet shave in the modern era. That's really a nice touch. So that's what I see in a lot of these brushes. And yes, I've got my share of brushes from Phoenix Shaving. Uh, also here is the Solar Flare with the butterscotch handle. Thanks, Mom. This is nice. Also a nice size for travel. Daily driver, but great size for travel. Another really, really wonderful soft knot that does a great job in producing a lather. I believe this is a 23 or 24 millimeter knot, but it does a really, really nice job. I really enjoy that. And of course, the uh, Amber Aerolite, which is their latest brush right here. It has the hybrid synth knot. Very, very nice. And again, another vintage uh, handle from days gone by. It just feels great in the hand. Uh, love the shape and the size of this brush overall. Love the color scheme. Uh, has an, uh, you know, an autumnal fall-like vibe to it. Really nice. So yeah, um, that was an earlier video before I discovered any of these great shaving brushes or any of the great shaving gear, shaving soaps from uh, Phoenix Shaving. But you're right, they make some great, great shaving brushes. And of course, uh, back at the time I made that video, I did have, as I recall, the Vikings Blade Fire Mare synthetic brush. This is probably one of my favorite brushes, along with the Phoenix Shaving brushes. Uh, because this one, uh, the synthetic knot has the most uh, natural hair feel to it. I thought this was a badger hair after I got it. Uh, I couldn't believe it was synthetic. It really has a nice natural feel to it. And of course, it's got the alloy base. It's got some nice weight to it. Um, I really like this brush a lot. Good travel size. Great brush for a uh, daily driver at home. Just a nice, nice brush. And of course, uh, another brush that I recently acquired was the Simpson Trafalgar T3 synthetic brush. I've always wanted a Simpson brush. I wanted this great classic looking handle. And they, I guess you could say they specialized in uh, upscale silver tip badger brushes. And I've always found them to be a little bit out of my reach uh, budget wise. But when they introduce this T3 Trafalgar, uh, which is a 26 millimeter knot. I immediately jumped on it because it was $40 right to my front door. So about $20 for the brush and $20 to ship from the Isle of Man up there by, uh, by England, Great Britain. So um, that was a great deal. I believe you can get these on West Coast Shaving as well. I'm not sure. I'll double check. But uh, a really nice deal for the brush. And it is a wonderful performer. It really is terrific. And again, glad I got it because it's that classic Simpson handle. Uh, and I, you know, I just love, I love the synthetic brushes, but I also love the variety of handles that you can get with them. I mean, there's just, I mean, it's just amazing. There's just so much out there. That's why I say it's such a great time to be doing the traditional wet shave. If you're not doing the traditional wet shave, what are you waiting for? There is so much out there in the way of razors, brushes, soaps, shaving creams, pre-shave soaps, aftershave splashes and balms. It's amazing. I, I'm so happy that I came back to the process and uh, I'm indebted to the viewers and other members of the wet shaving community for introducing a lot of this to me. Uh, learning as we go. It's just a great process. And uh, I've heard from some other viewers uh, who are dads and their sons are getting to the age uh, of learning how to shave and they're introducing them to the traditional wet shave, getting them a really nice razor, getting them some good artisan soap or some, some soap from Amazon like a Tabak or Paraso. 
boy, that's a great lifelong gift. It really is. Anyhow, Tobin, thanks very much for the question, and I hope that uh, hope that answers it. Okay, so this next question comes from CR125 Stin. CR125 STIN, I believe is what that is. And he writes, I've never used an Allen block. I only use a good aftershave bomb. Hey, nothing wrong with that. That's good. What is the benefit? I should probably just get one to try, laugh out loud. Well, I use an Allen block after every time I shave. Uh, I've always had one. And uh, the first one I bought was from The Art of Shaving when I came back to the traditional wet shave. They happened to have a store at a local mall. I went in and uh, something else I threw into the bag when, when they were selling me some shaving soap and uh, some other things. And uh, I hadn't used it. And I, as I learned more about it, I incorporated it in my post-shave routine. Now, I found a definition online that really is very uh, succinct and uh, very direct in understanding what an alum block is. Now I use the Phoenix Shaving uh, alum block. I've also used the uh, alum block from Ozma. There was an alum block I used called Shash. I don't think that's available anymore. But uh, these are all great uh, alum block products. Uh, and here's the definition. An alum block is the original antiseptic aftershave made of natural potassium alum which has antiseptic and astringent qualities. It can be used to help with healing minor nicks and cuts from shaving by constricting blood vessels and tightening pores. That's exactly what it does. Uh, it also gives me an amount of feedback. So if my shave is too close and I start getting some stinging, I know that, well, maybe my shave was a little overly aggressive. It also helps to knock down irritation, which is also very, very good. Uh, and since using the Allen block, uh, it has really uh, helped in minimizing any potential irritation that might have happened if the razor for me has been overly aggressive. Not only do I use the Allen block after a face shave, but I also use it after a head shave. I'm really interested in uh, getting that feedback and knowing whether or not my shave was too aggressive uh, and potentially causing some irritation. Uh, if, if it's nice and smooth and uh, glides across my skin without any stinging at all, maybe a couple little zings in here, here and there, uh, I know that I got a nice close shave without any irritation. And yes, there are times when maybe I've slipped up from poor technique or maybe I've used a razor blade one too many times. Uh, or maybe I've gone over an area where there wasn't enough shaving cream or there wasn't any shaving cream to protect the skin and maybe it's resulted in a little bit of a nick. Uh, boy, this to the rescue. It just will heal that nick up and coagulate it and uh, I would say 15 minutes after my shave it just sloughs off and it's gone. So it's great for those minor nicks, micro nicks, that sort of thing. It is a good astringent. It's a natural antiseptic. It is something that I use in my post-shave post routine after every single shave. If I don't use it, I miss it. I really do. Uh, now, the way I use it is I'll wet the block with cold water after I dry my face, and then I'll run it across the face, and um, then I'll just let it sit up, set up there, and then I'll apply my aftershave splash or balm. Some other wet shavers will apply it, wait 30 seconds, and then rinse it off. It's entirely up to you how you want to use it. Uh, some folks may experience a little bit of dryness from it. So if you do experience a little dryness from, from say prolonged use, I would start maybe doing the rinse routine, apply it, wait 20, 30 seconds and uh, rinse it off and see how that works. For me, it uh, is fine. I just apply it, wet it under cold water, apply it and then uh, wait 30 seconds, go on with my splash or balm or both, and then I'm good to go. And that's why I use an Allen block. I hope that answers your question. All right, that's it. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Please share, please subscribe, please like. Hit that bell so it'll give you a yell the next time I upload a video. Comment below, let me know. Check out the Executive Shaving Company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetune.com slash blog for my comic strip George, other cartoons, other videos like this. I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements 
for some great, great shaving gear. You saw these great shaving brushes, but they also have great shaving soaps, great pre-shave soaps, aftershaves and colognes, razors, they've got it all. They've got some great shaving gear up there. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark's Radio where you'll find all the products I review on this channel, organized and categorized, so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Looks like I need a warm up. Make it a great week. Thank you.